Hey, what's up guys? This is Cole with Tier 1 Transmissions. Today we are working on a 48 stage three. I'm gonna be walking you guys through how we do that build from start to finish. This is our bread and butter. Gets a billet input, Sonic servo, Sonic's billet accumulator, anchor, lever, strut, and a few goodies like six clutch direct and six clutch overdrive brake. But first things first, I got some machine to do. So let's get to it. Now I'm gonna polish the intermediate shaft get these bushing surfaces nice and clean. So right now I'm machining this stator support and this is with only a thou and a half taking out of it and this can show you how warped these are from factory. This is a thou and a half obviously centering off of the stator shaft um, but it's barely touching half of the face of the stator, which is where your pump gears ride. This is exactly why we machine every single one of these things for concentricity. So right now, this surface is completely concentric with this surface, which is how exactly we want it. And that is a beautiful surface finish, which is exactly how I want it. The better surface finish, the smoother the pump gear is gonna ride on it. One thing having a lathe allows us to do is to fix these plates that we get out of course. Um, this one, if you would have torn this one down at home, I would have just recommended that you throw this thing away. It's got a ton of heat marks in it. Um, it's very warped. But with a lathe, I can get this thing within a thousandth of runout, which is well within spec. I would be perfectly happy with running that, but let me get this thing cleaned up and I can show you uh, what it looks like. See how much nicer that is than you know what it used to look like. All right, so now we're gonna put together this overdrive section in our 48. And not much crazy going on here. These stay the same for everything up to stage fives. So yeah, let's get to it. So what I'm compressing right now is the overdrive direct apply spring, or the overdrive brake return spring. This is about a 580 to 600 pound per inch spring. So this is extremely dangerous. Um, if you are doing this at home, please be careful. You can very easily hurt yourself with this.
Yep. And here I'm measuring the overdrive section inside of the overdrive housing. This gives me two measurements, one for the overdrive piston shim thickness and one for a shim on the back of the intermediate shaft. Check, we got clearance, which is good. Clearance, clearance. And this is our finished overdrive housing with the entire overdrive assembly in it. Next thing, we're going to get all of our gasket surfaces cleaned and holes cleaned on our case so we can get our servos and accumulators in there and our lower burst assembly. So one thing that we do on every single one of our 48s is we drill the frag race in the case and we lock it in with these three bolts. And what that does is it stops the sprag race from pushing out of the case and it also gives it rigidity by locking it to the case. So you have less of a chance of under high power blowing the sprag race apart. So I got our sprag bolts torqued in, and now I'm gonna install the overdrive piston housing, also known as the center support, and get that torqued in as well. So the first thing I'm gonna install is our Sonics Billet Accumulator. This solves the factory problem with these breaking. Uh, the factory ones are plastic and only have two seals on them. This is obviously built aluminum and has four seals, so much better in just about every way. That guy just slides right in. Spring retainer. Now I'm putting together this Sonic second servo. Uh, the reason why we use these servos in particular is because they give you a larger apply area on the backside of the servo, which gives you more holding force on the intermediate band and more holding power so you can throw more horsepower at this thing. Our stage twos and ups all get Sonic second servos. Now we're dropping in our lower verse band and we'll get our lower verse drum and brass washer on there. Now on goes the seals for our overdrive piston. Make sure these are lubed up. Do not want to cut these when you're installing them. Want to be super careful with them. In goes our lower burst lever. Get new O-rings on your lever pin and get that slid in. And then goes on our overdrive housing.
I'll do an initial measurement on my front gear train, get all put together without any lube on it, make sure my measurements are all right. Pull it back apart, lube everything, put it back together, and then get it installed. I'll get my front gear train and intermediate installed. Make sure it's fully seated. Now I'll get my input shaft on my forward drum so I can install my forward piston and get my forward clutch back up there. I'll make sure it jingles. Don't jingle any good. Riding in the feet. This is my forward piston, same thing. Make sure you're really careful when you're installing these. Do not want to cut the seals. Now I'll get my three tab washer on my input shaft and start putting all my scarf cut seals on the input as well. Make sure the check ball on the direct drum wiggles. You want that sucker to be free. And jingle, jingle, jingle. There it goes. Hammer out my old bushing so we can get a new one installed. I always lock tight these in place. Do not want these coming out. Here, I'm just checking to make sure my stator spins nice and free in there, so it's not gonna have any issues. Here, I got my Sonics billet piston, just putting the seals on it, and then we'll get this thing stabbed in the drum. Get our direct clutch return springs. Retainer and snap ring installed. Then we'll start stacking clutches in the drum. Again, checking clearance. You can swap snap rings if needed. on the input shaft and drop it in the trans. Put our second band in. Then we'll get started on our pump. We'll get a new bushing and seal installed. Again, lock tightening bushings and staking.
This pump machine gets staked. You do not want this guy coming out. That'll be a bad day. Now I'm using a converter hub to make sure that the bushing is sized properly. Make sure that we're not gonna have any issues once it's installed. Here I'm checking pump gear depth. Make sure we have nice clearance in the pump so it's not gonna cause any issues, any bind ups, nothing like that. We'll get our stator installed, bolted down. That's worked up. Now we'll put on our scarf cut seals for our direct drum. And we'll do our initial end play measurement. First end play measurement, I always do without the pump o-ring, just for ease of removing it. Just installing check balls on the back side of these plugs, they like to pop out. Get our pump installed, should make a nice thunk. and torque everything up and we'll recheck and play. Take my end play measurement. our second band lever pin in there and we'll do our air check. Then we'll do our band adjustment and get the valve body in. Now we're gonna bolt on our high pressure valve body, get the pan on this thing and get it out of here. All right guys, and that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I'll get this thing out to the r, &R guys so they can slam it in the truck and uh, hope you guys enjoyed, thank you.